guys. Welcome back to the Pathways to Happiness podcast. My name is Nina Lavon. I'm a life coach that specializes in personal development and life improvement. And today we're going to be talking about all the different things that we can do to really increase the level of happiness in our own lives. Now, if you caught our last podcast, we talked all about the different things that I believe are really blocking happiness for many people that live in the United States specifically. Now, you may have noticed that a lot of those things were very external circumstances. And that's because the things that internally block us from happiness are all kind of rectifiable in the exact same way. So the great thing about the tips I'm going to give you today is that they can help bring about more happiness whether your blocks to happiness are internal or external. So these are kind of universal principles that can be applied in just about any situation. So let's go ahead and start with the one that I most commonly see in my clients. And that's the concept of waiting to be happy, waiting for some specific event or achievement before you will allow yourself to be happy. So for example, you tell yourself you will be happy when you get a new job or when you get married or when you have a baby, but you're giving yourself some kind of a hoop that you need to jump through before you will allow yourself to feel happiness. Now, this is a really dangerous concept because we never have a guarantee, first of all, that these events will ever take place. So if we are saying that we can't be happy until something happens, you are basically saying to yourself that there is a chance that you will never allow yourself to be happy because we, again, have no guarantee that this will happen. We have no idea what will happen in the future. When we are restricting ourselves in this way, we're also really not trusting the universe. We're saying that we have created a very specific script that we want our lives to follow. And when it doesn't follow that script, we are going to be unhappy. Now, that's not to say we shouldn't have specific goals or dreams. Now, it is certainly important that we have goals and dreams. So we have a path to follow in our lives. But we have to remember that life doesn't always happen in the way that we expect it. Even if we are achieving our goals, it may come about in a different and unexpected way. So we need to be open to that. We need to be open to the fact that the universe and life may have a better plan also than what we have initially thought of. So we can't really confine our happiness to a specific blueprint. We cannot wait to be happy. We must remember that happiness is always available to us. It doesn't have to come to us as a reward for a specific achievement or an event. And in fact, It is much more likely that we will actually achieve our goals and achieve our dreams if we are happy to begin with because studies show us that happier people tend to flourish. They tend to do much better in life. So if we can learn to break the habit of waiting to be happy and to really embrace happiness in the moment, we will find that our life naturally progresses in a much more positive way. And to kind of expand on that concept of living in the present moment, we want to remember to keep ourselves in the now at all times. So much of unhappiness comes from the fact that we tend to live in our past and our future almost all of the time. So instead of being mindful of what we are doing in that present moment, we're really always focusing on something that happened in the past, you know, something that happened either the day before or even sometimes, you know, years prior, things that are unresolved for us. We kind of ruminate over them and go over them again and again and again. And in some way, we are hoping to rewrite history, which will never happen. So it really does us no good to constantly be thinking about the past because it's also much more likely that we are focusing on the negative aspects of our past. You know, it is fine to think about from time to time those happy memories from the past. But again, it is much more likely that we're thinking about the sad ones, the things that we wish we could do over, the things that we wish we had done better, the things that make us feel guilt or shame. 
and it just starts that vicious cycle that really keeps us from enjoying that present moment. Or on the flip side, we are so worried about the future that again, we are ignoring that present moment. So we're thinking about the things that we need to do or the things in the future that we feel that we're not going to be prepared for or we don't think that we'll be able to handle. And it really starts to create a lot of anxiety. And this is because we also tend to create really terrifying stories for ourselves. So we think about these stories so much, we really start to expand on them and we start to believe that this is really going to happen in the future, that this is the definite future plans, this is our blueprint, and it is really, really scary for us. So another habit we need to really adopt is to bring ourselves back to that present moment. You're going to find as you do this that there's very little chance that there is negativity in this actual moment. The anxiety and the fear starts to come about because again, we are focusing on that past or in the future. So neither one we have any control over. So that is a very scary concept. We are thinking about things that we can do absolutely nothing about. We certainly can't change the past, it already happened, and we have no way of knowing what's going to happen in the future. So the only thing we have control over is that present moment. So really learning to embrace that concept of mindfulness is what's going to help us out with that. So by mindfulness, I simply mean that we are fully present in this moment now. So we are not thinking about the past or the future. We are thinking about what is actually happening in this moment. So often we completely ignore and don't even notice what is happening now because again, we are living in our mind somewhere. So mindfulness is really a technique to keep us grounded in the here and now. Another thing that is a block to happiness is being very resistant to change. Human beings have a natural fear of change. So oftentimes we are more likely to stay in a situation that we know is negative than to venture into the unknown. So that oftentimes keeps us in relationships or jobs or any other circumstance that we're not 100% happy with because that fear keeps us from trying something new. Our brain automatically puts a negative spin on it and it can make us feel that we are certain we won't be able to handle whatever is in this unknown. So we never really give ourselves the opportunity to embrace change and see all the positive things that it can bring. The reality is simply that change is going to happen whether or not we are accepting of it. And there's so many benefits to change. It helps us grow as people. It teaches us to adapt in ways we've never really experienced before. And that can be a really major driver of personal growth and development. And the thing that I really like the most about change is that it really shows us the measure of our own strength. When we aren't faced with these changes, we are just living in our comfort zone. So we're not really growing as people. And that growth is just simply so important. And that kind of leads me to my next point, which is we need to be growing and learning all the time. When we feel that we are intellectually starving, we just feel uninspired by life. And that kind of happens naturally as adults if we're not actively aware of it because we have this routine that we had to create to be able to get everything in our lives we need to get done. So there's oftentimes not a lot of additional time we have for self-development and for personal growth. So we have to learn to really create that time and seek out opportunities for intellectual growth because without that stimulation, life really becomes very boring. You notice that children are absolutely never bored and that's because the whole world is a mystery to them and it's fun and exciting and they want to learn more and more about how things work. And then as adults, we kind of lose that wonder. There's that saying that if you're not growing, you're dying. So we have to make sure that we're really seeking out these opportunities, even if it's just when we're driving, we're going to listen to an audiobook or a podcast 
or we're going to make sure we catch a documentary about something that we don't know that much about or we go to places that we've never seen before, or we talk to people that we normally wouldn't, so we see another perspective. But we have to make sure that we are not intellectually starving because that certainly makes us feel uninspired with life. Another huge block to happiness is holding on to resentment. So if we are you know, still holding grudges against people, we're really harming ourselves the most. A lot of times when we are holding these grudges, we are somehow subconsciously trying to punish another person. But who we are punishing the most is, of course, ourselves. So if we can look at our lives and see the areas that we really need to offer forgiveness to, we're going to naturally become a lot happier as people because it is a huge weight on our shoulders to be constantly holding on to this negativity. And so often the things that we are holding on to, the situations we aren't offering forgiveness to, no longer really have any meaning to us. They happened far in the past and we really need to get past them because we are never going to move forward because it's like a ball and chain around our ankles that we really drag along with us for our lives. So if we can let that go, of course we're going to feel better about our lives. And that is including forgiving ourselves. So often we are holding on to these situations again that happened that you know, we have to realize we are different people now. We are always doing the best we can with what we have. So we have to accept the fact that if there are things that we are ashamed of from our past, we were doing the best we could at that moment, even if it's something that we look back on now and just can't understand how we could have handled it that way. You just have to know that at that moment, that's how you chose to handle it because you felt for whatever reason, that was the least painful thing to do. And again, in retrospect, you may feel completely differently now, but you have to start to offer yourself forgiveness for those times. So that concept of forgiveness is something that will greatly enhance our happiness level. Another thing that we need to do is to start to break up our routine. As I mentioned earlier, as adults, we really start to have a very strict ritual of what we do pretty much every single day. And that includes our patterns of thinking. So we know that as human beings, 95% of the things that we think about on a day-to-day -day basis are recycled from the day before and the day before that. So our whole lives are kind of like Groundhog Day, if you think about it. So we really need to actively engage in breaking our routine consciously. So our routine thoughts and our routine behavior. I'm sure you've experienced it that you drive to work and you have no idea how you got there because your body was on autopilot. So we need to just break that autopilot by providing ourselves with lots and lots of new places to go, new people to talk to, and new experiences all together. And it can be as simple as driving a different way to get to wherever you're going or stopping at a different place for coffee. Even the smallest of changes make a difference. We're not going to feel that our lives have a lot of meaning if one day is the same as the day before. So just make sure that you are mixing it up and you're going to naturally feel happier when you do so. It is a lot more fun to live a life that has a spirit of adventure in it than just living for your routine every single day. Another thing that will greatly increase our happiness is to make sure we're really taking good care of ourselves. So that means the simple things like getting enough sleep, making sure we have a good diet, and making sure that we are exercising. Those really simple principles are something that I think gets kind of swept under the rug because we hear it so often we don't really take it seriously, but it is immensely impactful in our lives when we are really taking that proper care of ourselves and also really checking in with our emotional well-being enough. I feel that so many people are right on the edge of burnout at all given times in their lives. So it's a matter of really having the awareness of when you actually need to stop 
and take a break and take care of yourselves. And that can be, you know, little things like just taking a bath or just taking a nap, but it could be something much bigger. And remember that if you are taking the breaks that you need, your body is gonna to start to do that for you. So it's gonna be a day where you just don't go to work or you end a relationship that you actually really, really care about. So you need to make sure that you're taking care of your own self so that your body doesn't take these measures for you. Another simple thing that we can do that just adds so much value to our lives is spending enough time outdoors. So we know that studies show us that when we spend time outdoors, we feel a lot less stress and anxiety and even depression a lot of times. So, you know, take time to take that walk or, you know, go outside and look at the stars because we want to really infuse ourselves with that sense of wonder again. When we are kind of outside in the majesty of nature, we realize that our problems are very, very small. So much of the time we're just kind of inside our own head and if we can get out and physically see how big this world is, it really puts things in a much better perspective. Probably about a year and a half ago, I committed to taking a walk or a run every single day. And it has proven to be really the best part of my day. Not only do I love being out in nature, but it's just kind of the time that I use to think about the day ahead and reflect on my life. And it really is this really positive experience that I can look forward to every single morning. So that's a really simple change that we can make if we aren't already spending enough time outdoors. Another huge concept to me is appreciating and noticing the little things in our lives that make it so spectacular. So studies have also shown that the small things in life often have a bigger impact than even the bigger things. So if we notice, you know, how beautiful this flower is or how lovely this person's voice is, or, you know, it could be anything, a rainbow, it could be, you know, smelling your coffee in the morning, but appreciate all these little factors, all these little sparks of joy in your day. And the more you put focus to them, the more you realize how happy and positive your life really is. Because of our negativity bias as human beings, we are so often very focused on all the small annoyances and on the bad things in our life. So if we are filling our day by noticing all the good things, that's going to kind of act as a buffer from all these negative aspects in our lives. Another thing that I think can be a big block to happiness for a lot of people is spending time on things that we don't actually care about. And I find that to be true for many, many people. So a lot of times it has to do with our job. We are asked to do things that don't feel very meaningful to us. And that's understandable because we're getting paid to do that. But in our personal lives, we often do exactly the same thing. And that can be things like watching television that we're not really engaged in, aimlessly scrolling through our social media feeds, and different things like that. Things that are taking up time and space, but aren't actually adding value to our lives. So that's something that we need to be much more aware of. Because the average person really only has about four hours of discretionary time in their life. And some people don't even have that four hours. But the average American tends to have about four hours in their day only when they are not working or sleeping. So that is the time that we need to fill with all things that are truly engaging and inspiring to us. But so often we instead just completely waste that time. And I think so much of that has to do with the fact that we are really mentally exhausted and also a little bit bored with our lives. But the ironic thing is that once you start adding elements into your life that do inspire you and are engaging, it really just speeds up the process of, you know, finding fulfillment and meaning in your life. So we need to give ourselves that opportunity to do things that we actually care about and be aware of the amount of time we're wasting on things that aren't adding value. 
Another thing that is huge, at least in my own life, is catastrophizing, really giving too much meaning to the negative things in our life, looking at situations and making them into much bigger problems than they actually need to be. There is that expression, don't sweat the small stuff, and that is so true because most things in our life actually are small. We make them much bigger than necessary. So we take a situation and we really, you know, create a story around it that brings us a lot of anxiety. So we really need to look at all the different things in our life and take them for what they actually are instead of adding further meaning to it or worrying about the possible consequences that could happen because of this. We never know what's going to happen in the future and we need to look at things in a more realistic light. We also don't have that much emotional energy to give. So if we are constantly giving emotional energy to everything, we're just going to be exhausted by life. So we have to be a lot better with using critical thinking to see, does this really deserve my time and attention? We can't give everything equal focus in our life. We need to care about the things that actually have importance and the other things we need to learn to kind of brush off and move past them. Or again, we're just going to be tired all the time. It's also really important that we are giving ourselves things to look forward to in life. So we are planning little vacations or we are planning to meet people or we have projects or goals that we want to work towards. We want to make sure that we always have something that makes us excited to get out of bed in the morning. So again, it's offering ourselves little paths to go on that will provide growth and opportunity and experiences for us to look forward to. I know from experience that if we don't actually plan these things, they never really happen. So we don't want these to be floating thoughts in our head that someday we'll get to. We want to make them, you know, really concrete plans and goals, or again, they're not going to happen. We're going to wake up. It's going to be 10 years in the future and we've really not accomplished anything. But if we really are clear about our short-term goals as well as our long-term goals and about making sure we're providing ourselves opportunities to really get out there and enjoy life and plan them, these things actually will become part of our reality. But we've got to make sure that that is the case. It just comes back to the concept of living intentionally. So we are aware of what is happening in the present moment and we are designing what is going to happen in the future, but we are flexible enough about it that, you know, if plans change, it's not going to make us feel that our life is collapsing. We're going to go with the flow. And I just wanted to quickly mention two things that I also believe can really enhance happiness if you don't already have them as a practice in your daily life. And that is meditation and journaling. So with meditation, it's just that time where we can really, you know, center ourselves and kind of push away the mental clutter. So if we can give ourselves kind of that internal space to just kind of sit and be and reflect, we're going to find a lot more life enhancement there. And the other thing that I mentioned is journaling. Now that concept of having a self growth journal, it's just so enriching because what we can do is on a daily basis or for some people on a weekly basis, but for myself, I definitely like to do it daily is kind of let all the thoughts kind of dump out of our brain onto the page and we can see, you know, how we're really thinking, how we're really feeling, what things are valuable to us, what things keep getting brought up as concerns. Our lives are just so busy and so much of the time we don't have the self-awareness that is necessary to live our best life and to truly be happy because if we don't realize we're unhappy, we could never become happy. So those are the thoughts I really want to leave with you today. And my invitation for you is to use today to really reflect on the areas of your life that you think you really are blocking your happiness. Because it is my true belief that the natural state of being for human beings really is a happy state. And it is oftentimes just ourselves that is kind of coming between 
happiness. So we want to think about all the areas in our life where we can make positive change to really let that happiness come back into our lives as it deserves to be. So as always, I want to let you know that you are more than welcome to reach out to me if you have questions or show ideas. You can find me on Twitter. You can look up my name, Nina Lavon. My Twitter handle is Awesome Finding. And you can also use the hashtag AskNina. And my name is spelled N-E-N-A. So I thank you so much for spending time with me today. I look forward to spending time with you next time. And I truly hope you have an absolutely extraordinary day.